You already know what it is. Invertebrates. 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 You know what it is. Watch me camp. Watch me nay nay. Watch me camp, camp. Watch me nay nay. What are you guys doing? Don't you know the acronyms for the invertebrates? No. <sighs> Last week, when we talked about invertebrates, we talked about periphera, these are your sponges, nideria, your jellyfish. Then we got into lophotrochozoans. We talked about cladihelminthes, your flatworms, mollusca, these are your snails, and annelida, these are your earthworms. Together, those spelled camp. This week, we're going to be talking about ectozoas. First, we'll talk about your nematodes and your arthropods. And then we'll get into deuterostomia, which will be your echinoderms. Together, they will spell nay. So let's begin by talking about the superphylum echidizoans. In the echidizoans, there's two phyla, the nematoda and the arthropoda. Some characteristics that defy the echidizoans are they're protostome animals, which means their mouth forms first. Remember, for humans like us, the butt forms first. The second characteristic is they shed their exoskeletons. And the process is called ectodiasis, which means molting. This is a characteristic that makes nematodes and arthropods different from the phyla we learned last week, which were annelids. Molluscus and Platyhelminthes. So first up are the nematodes. These are your roundworms, which are unsegmented and pseudocoelomate. Recall from last week, pseudocoelomate means that the body cavity is lined with mesoderm on one side and endoderm on the other side. Arthropods are by far the most diverse group of animals. This is the group that makes up 80% of all species. That would also mean that some of our most favorite and not so favorite creatures belong to this phylum, like the scorpions, spiders, crabs, millipedes, and everyone's favorite, the centipedes. While all of these organisms appear so different from each other, they're all classified under the phylum Arthropoda, and as such, share a suite of common characteristics. The first characteristic is that all arthropods have exoskeletons. This is that external skeleton that supports and protects the organism's body while preventing water loss. It is the reason you hear a crunching sound when you squish a bug. Ew, gross. The second characteristic is they also have segmented bodies that are generally separated into three regions. That's the head, thorax, and the abdomen. This allows them develop specializations in each region of their body, so some segments may be modified for feeding, movement, and sensory perception. Each region is called a tegmata. The third, the third characteristic is their jointed appendages. This allows them to move their legs, claws, and mouth parts so that they can carry out daily functions required for living. The limbs of the arthropods can be either biramus or uniramus. Biramus means that they are two-branched, while uniramus is single-branched. Lastly, arthropods have a reduced coelom, but they have developed a hemocoel. This is a cavity that runs through most of the body, through which blood flows through. The hemocoel forms an open circulatory system. There are four subphyla that we will be looking at within the arthropoda. First up are myriapoda. This is the subphylum that is everyone's favorite, your millipedes and centipedes. Millipedes are detritivores which means they eat decomposing material. And centipedes are predaceous. These organisms live on land and have a very simple body plan. That is, they have only one tagma, made up of a fused head region and a long segmented trunk region. Next up is Chelicerata. In this subphylum, we have horseshoe crabs and arachnids. Arachnids are your spiders, scorpions, and mites. Arachnids are carnivorous, 
and many are venomous. Therefore, they have modified mouthparts called chelicerae. It is these modified mouthparts that define the subphylum. The chelicerae are used for feeding, but they are also used in defense and copulation. The body of an arachnid consists of two tagmata. The first is a fused head and thorax region, which we call the cephalothorax. And the second is the abdomen. Next, we have crustacea. In crustacea, we will be looking at the isopods that you looked at in Bio 152, some crabs and crayfish. Crustacea generally have a cephalothorax, again, that is the fused head and thorax region, which is generally covered by a carapace. And then they have the abdomen. Some organisms in crustacea are decapods, meaning they have 10 feet. This includes shrimp, lobsters, crayfish, and crabs. This means that they have five pairs of walking legs, but the first pair is usually modified into pincers. Out of the four arthropod phyla that we are studying today, this is the only subphylum with biramus lips. Again, that means that they have two branches. Next, we have hexapoda. Hexapoda means six legs. The organisms in this phylum have three pairs of legs and usually one or two pairs of wings. Hexapod bodies are divided into three tagma, the head, thorax, and abdomen. A distinguishing feature of this phylum is their exposed mouthparts, which is referred to as ectonathus. Hey. Why are you looking at my butt? Oh, that's why. Because now we're going to talk about deuterostomes. Deuterostomes begin their development from the anus. That's right, they're like us. The butthole forms first. They are also triploblastic coelomates. This means that they have three layers of tissue. An ectoderm, a mesoderm, and endoderm. The coelom is lined with mesoderm on both sides. Lastly, their embryo undergoes radio cleavage. This week, we'll be looking at the kinodermata. And next week, we'll take a look at chorodates. Both these phyla come under deuterostoma. Just a reminder, these are the organisms that started out as a butthole, just like you and me. Let's begin by talking about the kinodermata. When we look at marine systems, we sometimes see organisms like sea stars, sea cucumbers, sea urchins, and sand dollars. And no, guys, these are not the dollars you want in your wallet. All these organisms fall under the phylum Echinodermata. What all these vertebrates have in common is that they start out bilaterally symmetrical. But as adults, they are, are radially symmetrical. This is important because it is adaptive for their sessile and slow-moving lifestyle. Another cool feature about these organisms is their unique water vascular system. This is a set of fluid filled canals that aids in movement, respiration, excretion, and feeding. This water vascular system can be seen where it projects out of the endoskeleton as two feet. And speaking of endoskeleton, echinoderms have a calcareous endoskeleton which means that their skeleton is made of calcium carbonate. Their endoskeleton has many small plates, which may become fused or modified into spines. This is how the phylum gets its name, because the chinoderm really means spiny skin. All right, guys, so that's your invertebrates 101. Remember the acronym Camp Ney. Ready, guys? Watch me camp, watch me nay nay, watch me camp, camp, 
Watch me, Nene. Watch me camp. Watch me, Nene. Watch me camp, camp. Watch me, Nene. Watch me.